Tom and Zeus, another episode, Shout It Out Loudcast. Episode four, we're calling End of the Road. Tommy, how the hell are you? Zeus, good evening, my friend. Good evening, Kiss Army. Um, boy, what a time to have a Kiss podcast. <laughs> so uh, not much going on this week, huh? <laughs> no, it's been dead, huh? Nothing to talk about at all. Well, we'll have to come up and think of something. I don't know. I'm sure, we, I'm sure there's a couple things that we can get going right now. Yeah, well, I know I'm battling this cold, so, uh, this cold, so please, people, uh, bear with me. I hope uh, I don't sound too awful. Um, but this NyQuil over here, this tea, uh, hopefully I'll be back. And uh, if not, I'll have to uh, cancel my substitution for Paul Stanley uh, on the end of the road tour. <laughs> So uh, why don't we start off with, um, I, I guess we'll call this uh, part three in the Vinnie Vincent trilogy. Um, so so two weeks ago, we talked about how there was a, uh, a new lead singer announced. And then, uh, and then last week, we talked about how uh, that lead singer got bounced and Vinnie was going to have no vocalist and it was going to be a shred type show now part three no shows the entire thing is canceled what (laughs) are you serious (laughs) i don't believe it it's shocking has he ever missed a show no it's shocking he was like the cal ripkin (laughs) of like music concerts right (laughs) vinnie vincent's canceled the concert no yeah yeah so, as a Those two guys are going to be really pissed. <laughs> as a surprise, as a surprise to absolutely no one, um, yeah, Vinny came and went. So, all right, I will admit, I tried that kind of a joke online, and I got I didn't realize how many sensitive Vinny fans there are out there. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, does anybody care? I'm like, yes, I care. I'm like, holy shit, I'm sorry guys. Uh, yes, I care. I I paid good money to hear boys are going to rock. What's the matter with you people? shoot you full of love um i i feel bad for the fans you know what it's a real dick move to those guys because there are there are some really devoted like vinnie loving people out there and they've stood by him and unfortunately you know he hasn't done right by them and uh i'm you know it's it's been a pattern i i got a feeling they're not going to give up on him um you know, it's their prerogative if they don't want to. Uh, you know, look, the guy's got issues. He's obviously got issues. He came out of the woodworks. You know, he, he, he's got some sort of, you know, phobia going on or something because, you know, as I've been hearing other people say, all he had to do is put a quick video out there of him shredding a little bit. And people would be going nuts and then sell out his you know, small concert tour, whatever he was trying to do. He couldn't even do that. I don't know if it's self-confidence. I, don't, I mean, you can't be that good at guitar and just forget it. it it's just probably stage presence, phobia or something, you know, and, and that's too bad. But I wish, you know, he recognized that before he went out and had people spend money. No, you're right. And, you know, and we're, we're joking, but, you know, but like Zeus said, you know, it sucks for the fans. It sucks for, for him, it sucks for his band, um, you know, because people were legitimately excited to see some kind of Vinny comeback. Um, but, you know, like we said, I mean, you know, all jokes aside, you can't be surprised. Vinny has been, you know, a mess since his Kiss days and, you know, all the way up here. And I think people were trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and look forward to him turning a corner. Um, and, you know, it just didn't happen. And, you know, we'll stay tuned and hopefully, hopefully something will get figured out. Yeah, um, but let's um, let's push that aside because there's a bigger story, and let's like go down this story like chronologically. Okay. So it kind of started with the Paul and Gene article first. Yes. Where you know they go over the um, the same stuff, and I, look, I I I don't know where Tom stands. I'm going to speak for myself. I'm a kiss. I'm on Kiss's team. Doesn't mean I'm anti-Ace, but I'm on Kiss's team, you know? And lately, Ace has been a little bit 
a little bit of a pain. Making his snarky comments and throwing stuff out there. Get over it, buddy. And so what do we get? Paul and Gene said the same thing. I kind of get with Ace, like, why do you guys keep bringing that up? Like, why do you do that to annoy? Like, the fans know all about the story with Ace and stuff. We all know about it. Why do you have to bring it up? And, and, and it just sounds harsh. There's no need for it to say, well, they can't play it. They can't play. Just say we have guys that are in the band. They've been like family now for 10, 12 years. And we hope that Ace and Peter might have a role for them. But, you know, we're going to go with this. That's it. You don't need to keep saying, you know, they had their shot. They don't need to be in there. You know, three strikes are out. Um, you know, they had their demons in this and that. No chance in hell. They're com- like, come on. I, I hear what you're saying. And for the most part, <laughs> for, and for the most part, I do agree. I think Paul and Gene get put in a corner when people ask them questions specifically on this tour with it being, you know, the, the end of the road, the farewell tour. I think they need, they need to find a way to definitively explain to the fans why Ace and Peter aren't going to be there because people are going to be like, why, why not? Why not? Why not? So we they're going to, come- we know why. Right. They're not in the band. Okay, part of this is monetary, right? They're not in the band. They're not gonna give them equal share. They're not in the band. They haven't been in the I, band years ago. I, okay? I, I, I actually don't I actually don't think this has anything to do with well, I'm just saying, I'm just that's point one. Point okay. two is I don't think they can do it. They're not gonna wait for those guys to learn the, the songs and be right. able to handle a tour. They can't do it. Right, but 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 answering the question with that response is, is just as insulting because is now you're t- well yeah. I don't think that's insulting at all. Well, well, I mean, Ace has proven right now that he can play. He is touring. I don't know how. I mean, he's he's Peter. Uh, poor Peter. I don't know where Peter is. Peter retired. Right. Right. I don't. And I don't think he's going to want to go up there and say, "Yeah, I can do it." But right. more importantly, Ace can do it. Ace has got a kick-ass band behind him. Right. And let's be honest, we all let him get away with everybody up there, and Mister. Mr. High above, you know, on his uh, mountaintop there, Mr. Eddie Trunk loves to pull out Paul Stanley clips and go, he can't do it, he can't do it. Right. Buddy, Ace can't even sing into the microphone without missing lyrics and, you know, and just missing guitar parts without his band covering for him. Right. He can't do that. Come on. Right. We've got to get away with it. And besides right. that, why do they want to put up with the, he's late, he's not going to be here, what's he going to say in this interview? Like, they don't need that headache. Right. And, you know, and, and I agree. And like we said on last week's episode, KISS has become a precision band. They are a very well-organized and well-oiled machine. And as much as we love Ace, and we do, he is the exact opposite of precision and well-oiled. And it, it's, just, it's not going to happen. And unfortunately, the only way for Gene and Paul to answer the questions about Ace is to be harsh and firm and say look this is why i mean i know sometimes especially in this guitar world episode they laid it on a little thick um which they tend to do because it's you know it's a cat fight they want to they want to why do they have to bring up drugs and alcohol that's not why ace can't be in this band right now no but i think gene when he when they started getting into the three strikes argument i think gene again was getting ahead of himself and trying to explain the three strikes and you know it was unnecessary you're right i agree it, was. it doesn't need to the real fans know why he's not in there and then half the other fans are new fans they don't care they know tommy is a spaceman they don't care right but all you're doing is alienating those hardcore fans correct so what's the point why but do you I also, have to say that? But I also think Gene and Paul know that there is a huge faction of KISS fans out there that subscribe to the Eddie Trunk thing. Oh, it's half a cover band. It's not the real, you know. So I, I think I think they, they Gene and Gene and uh and, and uh, Paul, you know, they're 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 A type person type A personalities. They're 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 gonna. They, they are gonna come out on top. They they're not gonna give Ace an inch, and no. and and it sucks. So all right. So we get that out of the way. So we got the guitar world. And then front. what happens next? And then what happens next was the rant heard round the world on Ace's Facebook page. Just an absolute 
like literal psycho babble rant with just incoherent stuff after incoherent stuff. I mean, I have some of it here. Go ahead, uh, read the read the parts. The I, yeah, parts. yeah g- give me a sec. I have I have some of it here. Go uh, ahead, go ahead, shoot, shoot. Yeah. So um, it it's just it's stuff like um, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, the the one thing that's the one thing that sticks out to me is the, is the, the at the very very end, um, is w- is when, uh, when the the author of the article, um, and I'll refer to the author of the article uh, because that's going to be a a hot topic about who actually wrote this is uh, you know, I demand my job back and I will you know you got to get Tommy out of the band and all this stuff and before oh, all that thrown yeah and before all that psycho you know accusing gene of groping his wife and being a sexually assaulter and it just absolute just chaos you know i'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing because if anybody who's listening to our podcast right now they're big enough fans to know what we're talking about but just to cover it was a really long you know it started off the gloves are off blah 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 just total nut nut stuff um and and i know when when zeus and i read read it you know, I read it and I absorbed it. And then with less than five minutes, I said to Zeus, that ain't Ace. The Ace did not write that. And then all of a sudden the, the, he was tagging people. Yep. There was some guy named El Pato Stanley. Um, I don't know if he's related to Paul Stanley, but El Pato uh, Stanley yep. looked yep. like his, uh, his, his friendly little cousin from Venezuela. I don't yeah. know who El Pato is. Right. Uh, and then he's all of a sudden there's five guys tagged, and then there's two guys, and then they're and not no, tagged. And then there's none. Right. Yeah. Right. There's no mention of it on Twitter. It stays on Facebook. Is it gonna come off? I'm constantly checking. It's still there. Yep. And then, you know, then our good friend Mitch Lafon is yep. like thinks uh, we, we think he might have solved the case when he looks at the language and sees a previous well, well, oh, was it tweet or something, right? Yeah, yeah. M- M- Mitch, Mitch Lafon, who we we, we refer to frequently because um, we love Mitch, huge Kiss fan. So he posted something on uh, Facebook, which was interesting, and he said, "A, f- a twenty-two minutes before this rant was on Ace Frehley's official f- Facebook page, okay, it appeared on his significant other's Facebook page. So it's almost like this person." cut and paste it, put it on her page, then put it on Ace's page. Um, and I think, you know, and, and, and then, and then this, this individual, uh, who goes by the name of Rachel Gordon, um, pretty much got, came after Mitch a little bit on Twitter and Facebook. and was, and was like, yeah, what's your point? What's your point? <laughs> so, you know, obviously, you know, she, she's not happy. Um, then she wrote, she wrote a separate, rant on facebook um using similar language bashing gene bashing paul just a real just just nutty stuff and but it was more anti-paul wasn't it uh, it was it was pretty much just yeah yeah it was it was pretty it was pretty bad both ways but but when it came out it was one of those things where depending on which which quote-unquote team you're on is who you're going to believe because who was one of the first person out there to be like, yeah, Ace, good for you for sticking up for yourself and defending yourself against Gene and Paul? I know who it was. Yeah, who? It was, yeah, Stuart from Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> With the winger t-shirt? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean... I, I mean, no offense. I know, I, I don't, we don't talk politics on this. This is like Fox News saying, look, we play it fair and balanced. But did you see how the Democrats did all this? Like, it's him saying, you know, I don't pick sides. Yep. However, good for Ace. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm always calling it straight down the middle. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Well, and, that, and, that, and that, that's what I was saying. That This particular episode, depending on what, what side you're on, is what you're going to believe. But, but Exactly. And same thing like with any other opposite left-wing stuff is talking about their... Give me a break. We're seeing it through your prism. And that is that Paul and Gene can do no right. They're always out to screw the fans and screw everybody. And we're so stupid that we don't buy anything, right? But he's the smart one. 
he gets it. We're all stupid, but he's the real one that gets it. And, you know, he doesn't listen. He doesn't buy into fake kiss. Okay, buddy. Right. But, but I mean, that, that, that just becomes ridiculous because anybody who's commenting on this story is obviously a big enough kiss fan, you know, to care. And when you read the language, like we said, Ace doesn't talk like that. Not to men- not to mention, the reaction doesn't equal what uh, what Gene and Paul said in the Guitar World article. What Gene and Paul said was nothing that Ace has never heard before. It wasn't okay, anything. So let me take a step back then. Okay. It is so bad. Oh, oh, oh. what did she say the next time? What was the next article that came out a, a day or so later? Which one? The, that sh- that she accuses uh, that Ace accuses Paul. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because this is when it really goes off the rails. So after this rant comes out, the next story is <laughs> Gene and Paul tried to have Ace killed in the '70s by setting him up and having him go to some phony party. Well, I mean, really, this is this is what we're talking about. Yeah. So the same. He's going to a phony party. That's going to get him killed. Right. So let's see. So let's just say if, if this was true. So Ace tried was was set up to be killed by Gene and Paul, and then uh, got over that enough to the point where he got on the reunion tour with them in the '90s, went on the Kiss cruise, went around with Gene, and just brushed his attempted assassination under the rug. In addition to that, in more recent terms, yeah. times, excuse me, his wife or girlfriend gets accosted, sexually assaulted. He has to calm her down, not to press charges. Yep. But I put me back on your tour. I want right. to play with you and be on a tour with you. Exactly. So they try to murder me. They try to assault my wife, girlfriend. Yep. yep. But kick Tommy off the th- and put me back on the throne. Yeah. The whole what? thing. Uh, yeah, the whole the whole thing is bizarre, and I mean, obviously, it's bizarre. That's 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 not breaking news. I think what people are talking about is why why are, are they doing this to try to sabotage the opening of the tour, which doesn't make sense because which the I are, believe, you know, and, and Eddie what, says it again. Eddie said it again. I listened to him talk about this. He's like, it's not Gene that runs Kiss. It's Paul. Okay. Now, if we know Paul and how sensitive he is, Mm -hmm. you think Paul will ever forgive Ace, even if it wasn't Ace and it was his girlfriend, for stirring this shit up a day or two before the concert of their last final tour was about to get started? Right. Right? right, You think he's ever going to forgive him? He's going to look back and say, that's why I don't want that fucking mess on our tour. That drama shit. I don't want it. But you're making my point. Ace is the one who has everything to lose, not Paul and Gene. Why do this? Why do this? No, he because he played his hand. They called his bluff. Like, fuck it. You're not coming with us. You're off. I, I mean. So, and let's be honest. This is so stupid. Do you think if Kiss isn't relevant, Ace Fairly is relevant? He can't sell out shit if Kiss isn't still relevant. Why do you think? And, and Oh, and another thing. Part, part of that rant was that uh, apparently Paul... Um, or Paul or Gene, one of them or both, was begging Ace to come on the Kiss Cruise to to help with ticket sales. Really? They've done, what, eight Kiss Cruises? <laughs> and Ace has never been on any of them. So now all of a sudden, they're begging Ace to come on the Kiss Cruise? Yeah, I mean, come on. I, I don't buy it. Nah, yeah. I, the whole, and the, let's be done with this and move on to our main topic. One, one, this is nonsense. Go ahead. Can I, can I, I just want to say one last thing about this. Um, the interesting thing... Ace himself on 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 his Twitter page on his Facebook page has not said one word, not one comment about uh, exactly right about this. So I find that interesting that he has not said a word. Yeah, um, but stay tuned because I'm sure there's going to be a lot more to come with that. Yeah. So, like you said, let's get to the let's get to the exciting good news topic that everybody is interested in. Yeah, and so, but I want to kind of segue this. Okay. By going into, you know, ticket sales, we talked about it, and everybody's saying, oh, <coughs> excuse me, the haters out there. Yeah. And that is, 
you know, who were talking about, oh, the ticket sales, this and that. They're not doing stadiums like they did before. Right. Listen, there's two parts people are me messing up here. There is the reunion, and then there was the first farewell tour. Correct. We all know that the reunion tour didn't do as well as the farewell tour. So it's not like they needed Paul, I mean, Peter and Ace. Right. Right now. They're probably doing the same as they did in the last reunion tour, right? Yes. But the novelty of it, the comeback was the big draw. If they never did the comeback before and they're doing a comeback now and all of a sudden Tommy put on the makeup and Eric Singer put on the makeup, they'd be doing just as big as they did before without the other two. Agreed, because the reunion the reunion. Because all of a sudden Kiss is back with the makeup, right? Right, the reunion tour back in '96. It was the original members, <laughs> and it was it was the stage, the pyrotechnics, the it was everything, and that hadn't happened in what 16, 17, however many years. Okay, yeah, this this tour here, yeah, this is the end of the road tour, the farewell tour, but it's 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 the same four guys. They've they've been playing in makeup for twenty years. There's no novelty for us for us. For the KISS lovers that we are, yeah, it's huge because it's the end of the road. But I think you're right. I think even if even if Peter and Ace jumped in on this tour, I don't think that would really matter. And I think you said it. I, I don't think that would really matter. I think that might no, – I, it, it might, I think it would help a little, but it's it, not – Yes, it would help. Yeah, it would help, and I think, so, and I think some <clears> people <throat> would get really excited about it. But I think, the, I think most of the people going to these, these shows – are people like us that have been KISS fans for their entire life or maybe, you know, for the last 20 years or 20, whatever it is. I don't think there are people who are like, I, you know, if people aren't going to this show because there's no Ace and Peter, then I don't really think that that's the audience that, that these tickets are being sold for to begin with. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I do. It's just, it's just you know, phony tough guy. And oh, I, I'm, I only go with the originals. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's half a cover band. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's half a cover band. Space Ace. Oh, oh, oh. Meanwhile, when Guns N' Roses went back on, there was like the biggest tour in the last three years. Yep. How many of the original Guns N' Roses guys were there? Were there? Was Izzy playing? No, no, the two biggest people that people cared about were there. Slash yeah. and Axel. Right? I mean, they did have Duff. They had Duff. But nobody was nobody was going there to see Duff. I mean, I, you know. Steven Adler wasn't there. He played a couple songs, I think, here and there. No. But Izzy wasn't there. No. One of their better songwriters and guitar players. Nope. But the concert went crazy because that was the reunion. People yep. didn't give a shit. That's the what two I'm main saying. guys are there. So if Kiss hadn't been playing for years and Paul and Gene said, let's put up the makeup and we'll put Eric in the makeup and Tommy because yep. uh, Ace isn't around or, or Peter isn't around, the place would sell out like crazy. So it's, I think, a phony, faux kind of dramatic thing about the ticket sales because it's people that have an agenda. Correct. I'm right. I'm better. You you people are stupid. Yep. Yeah. I'm the one that liked them when, when it was, you know, and if these are my credentials. I used to like them a long time ago. Oh, until your buddies aren't in the band, right? Yep. You didn't have a problem when Ace was still in the band, but Peter was out, or when Peter was in the band and Ace was out, but... Yep. You know, when they're both out, now this is, you know, this yeah. is a cover band. Yeah. Guns N' Roses was a cover band when they went out. Right. Right? Right. I mean, give me a break with that stuff. It's just people looking to be upset about something in life. Oh, totally. And this is their stance. Yeah. It's the it's like the Twitter mob mentality. Oh, you like something? Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's that's all it is. So, all right. So, let, let, let we, we, got, we got all the negativity bull out of here. Now, let, let's get into some... Fun kiss shit. Now let's talk about the show. All right. Let's. I mean. All right. Let. let <laughs> well, let me just say, based on what I saw, talk about their funny little kiss set, huh? Based on what I saw, the people love it. Yeah. The people. The, love it. the crowd seems to love. It. So let's start with yesterday. I've been again battling this cold. That's and okay. Here I am. We're looking. I'm still scouring the internet, and boom, the first. Fake set list comes out. Oh. And I was like, people are jumping on it, and I'm like, okay. 
great. Everyone's like, they're playing the oath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that sounds weird. You know what, you know, tipped me off to it? Like, there's no way they're not playing Love Gun. There's no way. That's why it's fake. That's how, that's what I went with. Well, so it's funny. It's funny you talk about that. So tonight, um, like a couple hours before we're recording this, um, again, our buddy Mitch, keep giving him props. Um, he was on Twitter kind of doing a little quick, uh, you know, ask me anything type thing. So I shot him a question. I said, Hey, where did that fake set list come from last night that went viral? I guess it was guys in Metallica's camp playing like a joke. Mm -hmm. Um, they typed it up. Um, they sent it out. Um, but of course, because it's social media, people started jumping on it, being like, Oh my God, it's the set list. Now, the minute I looked at it, the minute I knew it was fake was when I saw the oath was on it. I'm like, there is no way they're playing something. I, from that. that wasn't it. It was the fact that Love Gun wasn't. I don't even think I got that far. I think as soon as I saw the oath, I'm, and, and and I think they were, they had they had all the way from Hotter Than Hell. I'm like, they're not oh yeah, that. oh I love that song. You know, right. I mean. So um, here's my point to you, Tom. Yeah. And we did the whole set list last week, and yeah. we're gonna talk about everything now. Yeah. Would you be? Would you rather? Be shocked and happy that the oath is on there, or would you rather be? You know what? They played Love Gun at my last show. Which one would you prefer? Oh, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> and I don't. And I don't want to. I don't want to sound like one of those people that we were just making fun of. If that fake set list was real, I would have went nuts because there's a ton of stuff on there that I've either a never heard live or haven't heard live in a long time. So, uh, yes, yes, that yeah. fake set list was pretty friggin' awesome. Well, I don't know. I mean, people were all the crowd seemed to love it. So yeah. I don't know, buddy. So all right. So enough of the fake set list. Why don't we start the the big thing that everybody was bracing themselves for was the set list. Yeah. What are that? What what's going to be on it? Um. Are they going to have all the old classics? Are they going to uh, throw in stuff, um, you know, from the from the eighties, from the nineties, from the two thousand? What's going to be on there? Um, so I think one of the first things that stuck out at me for uh, for me um, when I looked at it was I looked at the set list um, and I noticed that there was only twenty songs on there if I counted. Um, and Paul was on record as saying that they were going to play 25. Now, I don't know if maybe they realize, you know what, we don't have the stamina to do 25 songs every night. Um, you know, because an extra five songs, you're talking about another, you know, 20 minutes, maybe even more of a show. That's a long show. Um, but, you know, with all that being said, I think the set list um, was pretty basic. Nothing, nothing uh, surprising. They threw in a um, a couple of surprises. Um, the ones that stick out for me was they added uh, they added um, "Do You Love Me" um, on the encore. <clears throat> I was shocked because I actually don't think I've ever heard them play that. Zeus, do you re- do you recall them ever playing "Do You Love Me" before? Um, unplugged. No, 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 no. At a concert that you've seen. Um, I do. I think I remembered one of them, and they were like, you know, because Paul has the crowd sing some of the lyrics. Maybe oh, okay. that's you one know of what? the you things. Might, okay, you might be right. You might be right. Um, right. But yeah. But so, like, but like, I, but like I was saying, I don't, I don't know what you. I don't know what your thoughts on this are. They were. <laughs> Paul. Paul had originally talked about playing upwards of twenty-five songs. This particular set list only has twenty. Do you think they? Yeah. You think maybe. And like I was saying, you know, an, an additional five songs is a, is another 20, 25 minutes. Maybe they just realize, hey, we don't have the stamina for that. What do you think? Yeah, I would like to think that maybe as the show goes on, maybe they'll add more. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, but the, but let's get to the set list itself. Let's kind of, yeah. let's kind of break so, it down and look at let's it. Let's go down. What are they opening with, buddy? They opened up with Detroit Rock City. Uh, Which not- means you both got wrong. Yes, I, I picked Deuce. Um, what did What did you say? Yeah, I mean, I had, I had, I thought they were starting with Deuce as well. Okay, and I remember the good old days when Detroit Rock City would open it up, and I think it's a kick-ass song to open up with. Yeah, I think I it's don't a- have a problem with it. It really, when you think about it, we all love Deuce, but Detroit Rock City, even the most, you know, people that aren't big Kiss fans, 
they know it. Plus, it's such an energetic opener. It just the, the way the song kind of slowly kicks in and the drums, it's, it's perfectly timed for the pyrotechnics. It's, I mean, no one's going to argue with that opener. Now, nope. now, before we move down the set list, did you get a chance to see any of the uh, some of the fan the fan shot video um, for for the opening? I did. Now and that was that was pretty friggin' awesome. The way they came down, they they like they came down from the ceiling like on these little platforms, little was, pods. Yeah, it was pretty friggin' awesome. It was yeah, cool. Yeah. It was, I'm just, I'm for some reason I'm thinking I've seen it somewhere, but I don't know. I, I don't but, know. I mean, we'll get into the we'll get into the stage. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, but so after Detroit Rock City, uh, this surprised me hearing this one this early in the set list. Shout it out loud. Yeah. I, I, that, um. I told you they were going to go with it. There's no yeah, way. oh no, I know, I know. I, um, I, was, I, I was just surprised because that to me that that seems like more of a something that you might throw on at the end of the set list at the you know like a even throw it into the encore set. You know, yeah, yeah. and um, not surprised. And they go boom right into Deuce. Yeah, which I bet you, um, I didn't see it all. I'm thinking is they usually go one, two, three, and then Paul. Hey, doing everybody yeah right? yeah so yeah, i can't that, do the paul voice tonight i mean you can't you can't argue with that that with that you know that trio right there detroit rock city shout out loud deuce now we called this on our episode but i'm gonna be honest with you i'm shocked they actually played i i, I had almost no confidence that they would play this and i'm shocked that they did and i'm shocked that they put it forth they yeah played, they played "Say Yeah" from Sonic. Which I love. I, I do too. I, I, it's one of my favorite songs on the album. But I um, feel, I feel it, like that's a weird placement because you got right. Detroit Rock, you get Detroit Rock City shouted out loud and Deuce. The place is going nuts, and then you kind of slow it down a little bit with a newer song. I thought it was kind of a weird placement. What, what, what do you um, think? Because I think it might be in a segment where Paul starts him back up. Plus, maybe it, it lets Paul's voice. Well, I mean, he does scream a little bit in the in the chorus with the "say yeah," but yeah, I mean, it was right. Good. And then um, I, I just think that he goes because it's Gene singing. And then Paul Paul probably does the intro, and then he goes into welcomes the crowd, and then he gets into "say yeah." Yeah. Um, and then he uh, and then he goes into what you picked, and I didn't. Yep. No, yeah, I, I did pick it. I did pick it at the end. Um, Heaven's on fire. Yeah, that was uh, I was I was I was happy to see that. I mean, because I love that song, and I haven't I don't think I've heard that one in a while. Um, yeah. So again, trying to trying to mix in some '80s stuff, you know, which is good. And then, of course, one of our one of our favorites, especially uh -huh. live. I love it, War Machine. Yep. Yeah. Now this better now, watch out. Now this was what this was the part of the show where Gene does his um his fire breathing at the end of it, and I don't remember him doing that when we saw them. Apparently yeah. that's apparently that's what they did. And then your favorite song? I don't not like this song. It's just yeah. You, but we're tired quick. of it. So the so the next one. So after after War Machine, they go into Lick It Up. Now yeah, I was listening. Yeah. Now I was listening to. Um, you remember we went to the Rock the Nation show at at Mansfield back in right. the. Right, <laughs> <laughs> and we got those uh we got the live cd so i'm listening to because they played lick it up on that yeah. set this now, is a song about licking now i'm sitting there going i'm like okay you're bringing your daughter to the show yeah i'm bringing my son to the show i really hope paul doesn't start asking people who likes to get licked <laughs> it's about ice cream honey yeah. it's about ice cream <laughs> He gets ice cream, uh, you know, dripping down his hand or something. Yeah. <laughs> Who likes oh, to man. give it a lick? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> give what a lick? What are you talking about? I know, ridiculous. Anyway, uh, so so that so then they do. This was what you called this one. I did not. They then they go into a hundred thousand years. Thought they'd go when they went old school. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Taking so long. Yeah, that, that's that's Ooh. pretty. Oh, um, it must have been. Bitch <laughs> and then God of Thunder. We knew that that was easy. That's when I think Gene flies up. Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah, that's. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. And then he folds his arms. Yeah. 
and he nods his head. And he's all fucked up because he's like, looks like somebody beat him with a bat. He's all bleeding <laughs> everywhere, and he's just like, ugh. Dun, 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 Definitely a song dun, I prefer. Dun, uh, I prefer the live version of that one. Much oh more. yeah. And uh, I bet you, at one point in the song, and it's his his big thing. I can't hear you. Oh yeah. Every time. All right, buddy. Yeah, well, that's well, you know, it, your fucking ears, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what, you know what, I can't hear you means. That's translation for I think I forgot the lyrics to the next yeah. line. Give me a second to remember them. Yeah. He always says, I can't hear you. Yeah. You fucking ears, jackass. And then we got cold gin, which. Obviously, you knew that was coming. Someone said that Paul did this little stage banter. Yes! Oh my God! If I he it. Up, so how does it go? If if he go if he goes if he gets up there and goes, I was talking to somebody backstage before. If he does that, and he was oh. like perm plays with his hair where he like perms it like like oh. that's it like oh God, yeah. Paul, settle down. No one's drinking. How does the drumming go? <laughs> yeah. Paul, Paul needs to settle down. No one's drinking screwdrivers at the show tonight, all right? Relax, dude. I heard some of you people like to drink Purple Passion. <laughs> Who's got the Zima? <laughs> yeah, that's it, Paul. Um, what's next? And then I picked this one, and I was pleasantly surprised because I love it. They played Hide Your Heart. What do you think of that one? Yeah, I mean, they played it when we saw them with Def Leppard. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just you, no. You're not a fan. You're not no, not a fan. It's just all right. All right. <laughs> you think you think they're just trying to throw uh, you know throw something from the '80s '90s in there? Yeah, I yeah. think that covering all errors, like you said. Yeah. And then you got "I Love It Loud," which you knew we called that. You knew they were going to play that. that oh, that's yeah. a fan favorite. And then, oh. and then, no, I'm going to tell you right. Break. I'm going to tell you right now. The next two songs, I'm your favorite. Oh fuck that! Give me a break. Ugh. And roll. So they. So after I love it loud, they got, <laughs> no, you skipped Psycho Circus. Come on. Oh, you said the next two songs. I know. Yeah. So, so after I love it loud, they got Psycho Circus. Ugh. No. <laughs> no, no, nah, it's the fuck come, is clowns and circus shit. Why, why, why like, I said, welcome to the show. Like you said last episode, this is another one of those songs they try to, you're gonna like this song. Mm, you know what I mean? Not, yeah. And then after that, Your literally, literally, probably mm. my most unfavorite, if that's a word, I don't even know if that. No, it's not. I can't stand Let Me Go Rock and Roll. I, love I don't know. I hate it. I hate Good it. Good song. Good nope. rock and roll song. It's just, nah, I am just not a fan. I'm like, of all, I'm like, you have 20 the songs. Rocks. You have 20 songs on the list and you play that? Come on. The last you, song on the live. Played, you, you couldn't have thrown, you couldn't have thrown Strutter mm-hmm. on there. You couldn't have thrown Firehouse. You couldn't have thrown I Stole Your Love. Get the Firehouse. I mean, something. All right, and then after that, then what do we got? Paul flies through the air, beat a man. Oh, I was, I was, af- I was afraid that they were going to get rid of that because you know he they keep saying you know new show, new stage, um, but Love Gun flying out. Yeah, I, I saw the videos. He is doing it. It is. It's a little different though because when we saw them um, two years ago, he flew out onto like a like a small platform, like like almost at crowd level. Yeah. This looks to be that he's way higher up in the in the uh, arena, okay. and and it, and it looks like there's like a little bit of catwalk for him to move around a little bit more, other than it just might being... be different in every stadium or arena. Right? Well, we, well, we're gonna when we see them at Mohegan, Mohegan's a very very small arena, so the stage is probably gonna look a little bit different than when we go to see them at the Garden because the Garden's almost double the size of Mohegan. Yeah, so more more room to do stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after Love Gun, I was made for loving you. We knew that was coming. That's a great. Yeah. I love that. I love that live. You said you you like the live version better. Yeah. Yep, I do. And then I called this. Yes, you did. Black Diamond to end the set before the encore. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and then, ugh, 
then they come out with Beth. Like I, I, I get you. I get that they're gonna play it. Yeah. What, what do you What do you think of that? Um, it's a big, big hit. People yeah. know it. They gotta play it. And I guess they had they brought they had a piano out there and Eric sang it. Uh, I uh, I mean did, we, we did, did what was his name Rolf come out again? No, they had uh they had uh, Eric the butt nut the <laughs> piano tuner. <laughs> Who yeah. had his Rottweiler in the stuck in the piano? Oh, he's I don't think there. so. <laughs> he's wedged in there. He stripped his fucking teeth. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. Man, his name's Eric. <laughs> Eric, yeah, the butt nut. Um, and then they come out with "Do You Love Me?" Yeah, that was that was awesome because that 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 was a that was a pleasant surprise, especially to throw it into the encore. You know, I was pretty shocked at that. Um, and then of course, you know, they close it out with "Rock and Roll All Night." Now, did you get a chance to see the video? Because I'm going to tell yes. you right now. Yes. The, this, the, the, the crane, whatever the setup they have for Gene and Tommy on this is absolutely awesome, I think. Yeah, where they go out? Like, the, they, they go out way up high and way out over, like, the entire, like, it's almost like the thing, like, spins them around. Like, it brings them out backwards. They swoop kind of, down. They yeah. swoop. They were swooping in. They were going, kia, kia. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <He> swoop. <laughs> well, he told me. <laughs> yeah. Bad birds. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. And of course, in the, the clip that we saw, the the clip that's going around on the uh, on the internet, you know, Paul's got his ah, sing it. Yeah. Because of course, yeah. of course, everybody needs to sing it. Oh, they do. Yeah. And and then they come back and do what mainline. Hold on, we got one more song. So, what? 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 what, what, what what's your overall? Opinion? All right. So, I took some stats here. Okay. Okay. I was my top ten locks. Yep. I was ten for ten. No shit. You were nine for ten. What did I miss? Well, you had hotter than hell. Oh, okay. I got eighteen out of twenty. Really? Yeah. You had 15 out of 20. Wow. Not bad. But you, I missed Hide Your Heart and Let Me Go Poker. Let Me Go Rock and Roll. <laughs> yep. You missed Shout It Out Loud. I don't know how you missed that. Yeah, that was ridiculous. You missed War Machine. Oh, yeah. I had 100,000 years. Yeah, that was good. Let Me Rock, Let Me Go Rock and Roll. You had that? Yeah. Ugh. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I apologize. I didn't. Okay. And do you love me? Nice. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I, and then we, we both got the opener wrong, and I, I got the closer right. Yeah. 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 No, no, you did. Yeah. Um, you know, we a couple other ones that we thought might be in there. Well, we went twenty five, like making love, um, tears have fallen, shock me, which I am glad they didn't play. Uh, Strutter, Firehouse, Crazy Nights, I Want You, I Stole Your Love, Parasite, Christine 16, Forever. Um, those are songs that uh, they didn't play. And, uh, oh, Tears Are Falling, too. Did I say that? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I'll be honest with you, and I'm, and I'm not trying to be, you know. Firehouse, yeah. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be, you know, disagreeable here. I'm not trying to be argumentative. Right. I'm I'm really underwhelmed with the set list, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I, I, well, look, it's Kiss. We love it. We love yeah. it. But I, I I I was I think you you created your set list. I had wishful thinking when I created mine. Um, I I think I was hoping that they weren't going to do this, and they did it. Now I know they threw in "Say Yeah," "Heaven's on Fire." Mm -hmm. Hide your heart. I'm just, first of all, I cannot believe that their most recent album and a song that they pushed as a hit is not on this set list. Hello, hallelujah. Really? I can't believe that. You, you, I can't that believe they didn't play Eat Your Heart Out. <laughs> I just, I can't believe that with this, these four, with, with Tommy and, and, uh, and Eric, 
making that album that that was not on here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you know, they, you know how they are. And, and this is just it. And we talk about this all the time. Paul Stanley says the same thing every single time. Yep. He's wrong. Yeah, I think it's a cover, you know, for them to be able to get out of stuff. He There was an article on Billboard before yesterday's concert. Yep. And he wrote, this is not an obscurities tour. This is not a tour where the diehard of diehards is going to hear a song that we've never played live before. I really believe that now more than ever, we should go out there and celebrate the songs that people know and have connected over the years. It's certainly not a show where somebody's going to look at the person next to them and ask, what's that song? When is that from? That's when, That's not what this is about. There's nobody really at a KISS concert that's going to say that. Zeus, honestly, Paul needs to fuck off with that statement, okay? And, and you know why that pisses me off? That pisses me off because that, honestly, that, that honestly, that goes to show that Paul is completely clueless about his audience, okay? Everybody in that arena, there isn't a single song that they could play where, two, where KISS fans are going to be like, well, what, what album is this from? Uh, what's this from? Okay. And, and that pisses me off that he, I, 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 I don't, I don't want to believe that he truly thinks that, but the fact that he says it is just frustrating because obscurities, dude, you added say yeah to the set list. Nobody knows that fucking song except for diehards. Okay. Nobody. It was never a hit. It was never promoted as a hit. Modern day. They've been playing it. They've been playing it and they played it all last year and all their tours overseas and stuff. They've been playing it. Okay. Right. Okay. Fine. I'll give you that. Okay. But that's, that's not a quote unquote hit. That's not, that's not shouted out loud. That's not. It's, it's, it's what people do. Sometimes they always go to the extreme, right? I'm no one's going to say play all the way, play mainline. I get it. They're not going to play those. Right. But play something different right. that people really like. Play Mr. Speed. You know it's a cult hit. Yeah. You know the fans love it. Yeah. Do you think the crowd would have been happier to hear Say Yeah or Mr. Speed? Oh, God. The place would have they, – the, the, they would have split their heads in half if they played Mr. Speed. Right? So now, it, it's just a comfort level for them. They don't want to learn a new song and get into it. They've played Say Yeah in the last 10 years a bunch of times. There's nothing in here that they've never played. Right. Nothing. Right. And even and, in the last 10 years, there's really nothing in there they haven't played. Right. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I, I, lo- I love Say Yeah. I'm, I'm psyched to hear it. I am. I, I, I like Hide Your Heart. I like Heaven's on Fire. I like those songs. But what happened to Paul with this, you know, the 25 songs, the spanning all eras? Okay, I, you, you, you sprinkled in. You know, heavens on fire from the eighties. Hide your heart from ninety. From ninety. You know, say yeah from the like, like. I mean, I, I understand. Like again, I'm, and I'm, I'm not just saying this because I don't like the song, but like, let me go rock and roll. I, I get it. It was on a live. It's a big hit. I get it. I know that. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I guess I was. I, I my wishful thinking got the best of me. And when yeah. I saw this, and when I and when I saw the set list, I was just a little underwhelmed. But how do you know that there's not half the people out there that said, you know, I I they used to play "Let Me Go Rock and Roll." It's on alive. I love that song. I want to hear that song. Holy fuck, they played it. Yep. No, you're right. right? I agree. So they got to play something that was on a compilation. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Right. Yep. Say like, I would have been on a compilation sooner or later, a new one. All right, no, so no, nothing, nothing. Everything for, is compilation type material. Nothing, They're not playing "It's All Right" from Paul's solo album. They're not doing something that was never like out there on some sort of compilation. Dude, That's nothing, how I look at it. Nothing from Revenge. That song had a lot of hits on it. That album, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. That album. That no. album had a lot of hits on it. N- N- Unholy, Domino, I Just Wanna, like those kinds of songs. I mean, you couldn't have thrown that in there. I agree. You know, I don't know. I, I got, but I believe, okay, I believe 
those are the ones where if you get a Bruce appearance, they'll play. Bruce is in California for this at this concert. Great. They're going to do three songs, including Domino. You know, something like that. No way. Yeah. No way. I think so. And that's why they're saving Shock Me. In my opinion, that's why Shock Me's not on there. They're holding that out. So when Ace comes to her show, they'll let him play. Now you think Ace is going to come oh, for Oh, yeah, show. he'll still be in the concert. They've what? said way worse things before. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You don't think Ace is going to make an appearance at any point in this tour? Hold on a second here. At the beginning of the episode, you told me that this little incident f- totally destroyed any chance of that happening. Now you think... No, I'm saying of him being in the band like people want. Like, okay, the final four, the, the original four going out doing stuff. Oh, I don't think you're going to see Ace again. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. Wow. I, I, Okay. I think he's going to do something in Madison Square Garden oh, or no. something along the way. Yeah. I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. I don't think you're going to see anybody. I think that's a pipe dream from all the fans. I don't think you're going to see. Uh, I think they're going to come out and do a couple songs together. No. Well, nope. you know. I hope. I, I, I hope you're right. I, I do. I hope you are right. It is me. interesting that they didn't come out and say anything. You know what though? Paul and Gene are better than that. I think. I think that. I think they knew that. The whole point of that rant was to try to stoke some anger with Paul and Gene, and they're professionals. They're not going to answer that. That was a read that. That's a psychotic rant, okay? And then accuse them of trying to get him get Ace killed. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's stupid. But you my know? point is, I believe I still have hope that when they do like some sort of a live five, they will have clips of Bruce on two, three songs. Peter Sim coming out singing Beth, um, Ace coming out doing Shock Me in 2000, man. You'll see. Okay. Uh, I, I we think have the proof we're recording. We'll I, listen to it later. You, you want to know what I think? I think, right. you, I think you have had too much NyQuil. That's what I think. I think you're out of your mind. I think you're crazy. You might be right. But, you know, and again, it's not like I'm having, like, if they don't, then this is bullshit. Of course. No, I'm still holding out hope. You never know. Right, uh, right. I think they'll still do something small right. along the way. Yeah. Um, you know, but who knows? Um, now a couple, a couple other things. Yeah. Um, to talk about with the show. Um, so in our previous episode when we were doing like some predictions and stuff, I was talking about some nostalgia. You know, like some throwback stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw it. But I can't. What a what a throwback from Gene. Did you see? Did you notice the Sam the Serpent? Yeah, I heard. Yeah, that, uh, that was awesome. I mean, from from the Love Gun era, from uh, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park, all that stuff. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That yeah. was pretty awesome to see that on the stage. Yeah, um, with with them, I, I was not expecting that. I thought that was pretty awesome. Cool. That was cool. And then um, you did you got you got to look at like some pictures and videos of the of the stage and everything. What, what, did, what did you think? I, I actually think that for the first time, because you know how when Paul and Gene are like, oh, it's going to be the most amazing stage you've ever seen. It's going to be blah, blah, blah. I was actually pretty impressed. I thought it was actually pretty different and pretty kick-ass. I, I, thought, I thought it was pretty amazing to be from what I saw. Absolutely. They're always setting up the bar, you know, higher and higher. The fire was like, looks like it was going to burn through the screen. Yeah. Holy Christ, the bombs going off throughout. Yeah. I thought. It's awesome. Yeah, I thought I thought the um those little like screen pods that they had kind of hanging over them that kind of moved the silly around little screen pods. Yeah, <laughs> they kind of moved around, and depending on what song they were playing, it would have like different graphics. Like um, I showed you one of the pictures when they did Psycho Circus, like each of the different kind of screen pods. I keep calling them. Yeah. Like, they had like different graphics, like depending on what song they were playing. They had a huge screen behind them that would. You know, it would have like the big kiss sign, but then they would have different graphics and different things. And then the stage wasn't; it was kind of like pointy. And then it had like the lifts, and I thought it, I thought it was pretty awesome. I, I was impressed. That that that, I agree. that surprised me. That's that's going to be pretty cool to see it's that. Funny in because you know, this week at some point I was with my daughter driving her back, and I'm telling her about, "Oh, you're going to go get to see Kiss," and I'm trying to do it in a. Uh, teaching way method yeah like you have to understand honey 
the concerts you see, a lot of these stuff, the stuff that you may see in a concert, they got that from Kiss doing it. You oh, know, yeah. Fire and stuff. And she's like, well, you know, I don't think, you know, Taylor Swift is lighting off bombs and stuff. Right, uh, right. And, but she's like, oh, but I think uh, Falling Down Boy, whatever the oh. fuck you call that band, <laughs> um, they do Fire Daddy. And I'm like, Oh yeah, because that's they're so badass. Fall down, boy. What's they what are they called? Fallout boy. Fallout boy. Okay, Fallout boy. <laughs> oh. Anyways, like like I I'm back to the I can't wait because I can't wait for her to just be like that. What was that? Oh, I know. Yeah, it's gonna be you know? it's gonna be insane. Yeah. So, so one, one, one other, one other thing, one other thing I want to touch on about the show, the stage, and everything. You saw a lot of people last night and today taking pictures and sharing them on social media about the price of the merchandise. As I explained to the first jackass, yep, jumped all over it. That's crazy, even yep. for them. Yep. Who said that? Uh, I know. I know. Same little Stuart. St- that's we'll we'll refer to Let's him as Stuart. Stuart's house. We'll refer to him uh, as Stuart. Um, yeah. Hey, buddy. As I pointed out to him, that's Canadian dollars. Yeah. It's and, and, and that's true. And it's still um, a hundred dollars shirt is still about seventy five American dollars. Okay. Yeah, it's opening night at the first Kiss concert on the end of the road tour. Right. They right. jacked it up a little. Guess what? Prices will drop if they don't sell them. Right, and like they normally do. And not only that, I I, I said something. I, I got involved in a conversation on Twitter about merchandise prices, and I said, "Look, you know, I'm not I'm not here to defend Kiss. It's a problem throughout merchandising and concerts in general." Okay, I've been to concerts at small venues, um, like when we when we go when we go to Hampton, you know, the ballroom there, where we've seen uh, we've seen Rat. We're, we're going to see Tesla in April. That's a small venue. OK, for bands that are not like Kiss and they're selling T-shirts for like forty dollars, forty five dollars. Yeah. So you take the biggest band in the world on their farewell tour. You're going to spend 40, 50. For these people to come out and, and specifically shit on Kiss in, in Paul and G. Oh, 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 I thought they were doing it for the fans. Yeah, you know what? They are doing it for the fans, but they're in the business of making money. And yeah. like you and like you said, if people don't buy the sixty dollars shirts, they're not gonna be sixty dollars anymore. Hey, who's the biggest fucking lover of the fans here in Massachusetts? Oh, what's his name? Bob Kraft loves the Patriots fans. Hey, go to the Patriots game and go buy yourself a fucking beer. What's yep. that costing you? Yep. Right? Yep. You can buy a 30 pack for two beers. Yep. That exactly. it costs you at any game. I'm a season ticket holder for the Boston Bruins. Yep. Hockey's my number one sport. Right? Yep. Guess what it costs to park there? Guess what it costs to get two beers, a couple dogs, right? And yeah. some popcorn or something. Oh, and that. Right? And that, and I mean, that, yeah, it sucks. We all know it. And that was my point is that it's, it's, it's the problem in general. Again, I, I've seen some smaller bands that that like like la- like last last summer our friend Jimmy and myself we went to go see Incubus. Now Incubus have been around since the 90s, yeah. but they're not a huge band that's going to sell out arenas. They play places like Hampton the Ballroom, okay? Mm-hmm. Great show, okay? All right. 40, like $40 t-shirts. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. I mean we Someone's just we, buy them. What's that? Someone's gonna buy them. Exactly, and if somebody doesn't buy them, they're not gonna be that that price anymore. So, anyways, that's my merchandise rant. It just pissed me off because I see all these people with the pictures, and everybody's like, "We'll refer to him as Stewart again." Everyone's like, "Oh, Stewart! Oh, look at this! Oh, I thought it was for the fans." Yeah. Oh, you know, that's bad, even for them. Yeah. Anyways, a fucking break. Yeah. All right. Ridiculous. Um, so, Tom, anything else you want to go over about the concert, the tour? I mean, they're important tonight. Yep. 
day two. Yep. As we've talked about before, we're going to go see them live in Mohegan Sun and Boston Garden. But other news that we didn't talk about earlier, yep. Gene scratched the vault experience. Did you hear about that? I did. What? I, the, it, so there's so, no more vault. You either, uh, again, he's going back to meet me in these cities. Yep. And, um, or we'll mail it out to you. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where I think someone said that um, he had too many commitments. Yep. He's got the regular meet and greet, then he's got the, you know, hey, you can get, you know, the sword, um, you know, that you can get this signed or this signed. Like, it's probably going to be there till like two in the morning with all that stuff going right. on. Right. And so I think they found it overwhelming. And then he just went back to, you know, I'll be in Chicago, I'll be in Milwaukee or something like that for these yeah. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that that was interesting too. Um, no, I mean we've covered what we wanted to talk about. I mean, you know, we talked about the set list, the props, the stage, the screens, the you know the merch. We talked. I mean, anything, any, any, any. How uh, did they sound? How did we not even see that? Are we like? Are we shitty Kiss fans or what? We just talked about everything except the music. You're right. They sound they, great. Yeah, you know what? Again, I'm not. We said this at our on our introductory episode, Zeus. We love Kiss, but we're not afraid to. We're honest about them. We have seen Kiss before where they have not sounded good. Okay, yep. I thought what I heard last night sounded really good. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to get into the argument again about are they using backing tracks or what. I don't care. What I heard last night sounded awesome. Yeah, and I'm sure people are going to come out. See here, look at this. Johnny Zapruda film is going to come out and point out everything. Oh my God. Whatever. I didn't see it. I didn't notice it. Whatever. I thought they sounded good. I thought Gene, I thought, I thought they looked great. I thought, <laughs> I, I, look, I was impressed with what I saw. Um, I hope I'm they can do it. What's that? They got many dates. I hope they can continue to do it. You know, it's funny that you say that all jokes aside, that's actually one of my concerns is that these guys are not young and, God damn, they got a lot of stuff coming up here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, no. It, it's it's going to be tough. But I'll tell you, they they looked they looked good and they sounded good. So I, I think that's all we could hope for. Yeah. No. You know the demon. Yeah. Yeah. It was good stuff. So yeah. so so bef- so we got a couple questions that we'll cover. Um, you got one. I got one. So yeah. we didn't do at the be- at the beginning of the episode. We didn't do this. So just now we'll throw out our how to how to get in touch with us um, on all the social media platforms we're on twitter instagram facebook um you can search for us shout it out loudcast um we have our email up and running shout it out loudcast at gmail.com um you know we say this all the time reach out to us comment um ask us questions you know ideas for topics ideas for whatever um and if you can too go on itunes and give us a review um, you know, a, a, a nice five star review really bumps us up um, in the rankings. It increases our visibility with recommendations for people that might be listening to other Kiss podcasts. So that's a really big help for us. Um, we're on um, we're on Spotify. We're on Google Play, Podomatic, YouTube. Um, we're on all those places. So feel free to reach out with us. We're very active on all those platforms. So no, and and that's just it. You know. You know, some of you guys are getting our sense of humor. Yeah. You know, we like to kid around. So some of you guys are interacting with us more than others. Uh, you know, I want the rest of you guys to kind of pick up on that. We're happy to go back and forth. Um, you know, and, and find, you'll find that we uh, we enjoy interacting with our fans. And, again, they're not really our fans. They're KISS fans that happen to listen to two idiots talk about KISS. <laughs> and, um and that's it. And, you know, feel free to email us questions um, where, you know, the questions are thankfully getting more and more. But you can send it out to, as Tom said, shout it out loudcast at Gmail dot com or even send it to us. Direct message us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all, you know, anything else. Uh, we're happy to answer your questions and, and, you know, whatever you want to talk about, whether it's kiss, whether you want to find out who's better looking. <laughs> um, whatever the hell you want. Um, so that being said, I've got my first question was from Jack. 
who must have wrote this the Torse. last day from Jack, Twitter. Jack Torse. Jack. <laughs> Jack Torse. Um, on Twitter. And he asked, Team Ace, Team Kiss. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> I, I, you know, I would guess, I'm going to say, look, at the end of the day, I'm Team Kiss. I have nothing. I'm not anti-Ace. I wish he was in Kiss, but he's not. I wish Ace from the 70s was in Kiss. So even if he was in Kiss now, he wouldn't be Ace from the 70s. He'd be the guy going, didn't I win a Grammy? Where's my Grammy? Oh, God. Um, you know, that guy. Um, so I would, my thing is, yeah, uh, Kiss is the band I'm following, right? I only follow Ace because he was in Kiss, not the other way around. So, Tom? No, no, I agree. I mean, look, Ace is, we love Ace. He's a part of the band that we loved growing up. The We, we love his music. We love his solo album. Uh, we love his his career after he left Kiss. But he's just not the the idea that you have in your head of ace is not the ace that exists right now. It's just, it's not. And it will always be team kiss for me. Okay. I, I, Paul and Gene, and I, I love them. I love the band. And like Zeus said, I wish things were better. And I wish Zeus, uh, I wish ace was, was on better terms and, and part of the show, but he's not. So yeah. it's always going to be team kiss for me. And you know, the other part to this is, I'm listening to, you know, Eddie Trump talking about, oh, you know, I played down the middle. I'm, you know, I'll, I'll be fair. And I don't always talk about, you know, always take Ace's side and things like that. Yeah. But everything is always slanted. And when he talks about it and he says, oh, Ace is a lovable loser. That's the reputation he had. And I think a lot of KISS fans of going out there, you know, sabotaging him. So when he talks about losing millions of dollars, you know, I'm like, shut like, yeah, there's a, there's a big conspiracy of Paul Jean Kiss fans that like, let's shit on Ace and make sure he doesn't make a dollar in this business. Give me a fucking break That's with ridiculous. that shit. There's no you know Kiss it? conspiracy to put Ace down and call him a drunk and stuff like that. Yeah, Paul and Gene are wrong to constantly bring it up. But maybe they're constantly bringing it up because he was so fucking annoying as yep. a fucking drunk with them. And it's and and and, and you know, not to not to turn this into an ace pile on, but he's proven it again right now. Okay? If that rant by his girlfriend or significant other or whoever that was, if she wrote that and put that on his Facebook page and to this day What's it been out there for three days? He hasn't said a fucking word about it. Taking it down. Shame on him. Shame on him. for not taking it down. Yep. Like, they, why would, like, I would be like, I don't want to deal with this. You take it down. I'm not apologizing to you publicly and taking Tommy out to put you in. Exactly. No. So, so F that. What yeah. do you got? I, I, we, so we got something from our uh, shout it out loudcast at gmail.com, our email from Steve has a, an interesting question here. So the set list, do you think this is going to be a set list that is set in stone for the remainder of the tour? Or do you think that they may mix it up here and there? Maybe one night, pull out a song and put it another, maybe the next night, pull out a song, put it another. Or do you think what we just read off and saw last night is it? No, I think they, I mean, okay, take it back. I think this will be it until there's a breaking point in what's already been announced as their tour. So, you know, there's going to go on for three years. They've got the tour set up. Yep. After that, I think they'll probably put in a couple of new songs and, or I believe they have some songs in their back pocket for when a Peter or an ace or a Bruce join them. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think the, I think this first leg of the tour um, that you'll see probably for the for the remainder of this year. You know, I, I think the set list that you saw last night in Vancouver, I think that's going to be it. Um, yeah. We've seen Kiss many times before, 
and they're they're not like Pearl Jam. You know, they're not like one of those bands that it's going to be like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see what they're going to play tonight. You know what they're going to play every night. And that's fine. Um, they, 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 like, like I said earlier before, they're, they're a precision band. And I think Paul has said this before, too, in the past. Their show is so technical with visuals, with pyrotechnic, with the mm-hmm. screens, with the graphics – that everything needs to be planned out in advance by those, um, you know, by the the show, the producers, the technicians, and it's hard to throw in a song that might mess up the flow of that, you know. Yeah. So, but you might see, hey, we don't play say yeah, we'll play modern day Delilah. Yeah. Yes. We don't exactly. play do you love me? We'll play parasite. Yep. Like one or two songs here yes. and there, in different cities, maybe, yep. maybe, right? Maybe. Just so people can talk about it or something. Yep. Yep. So. So. So Tom. Yeah, I- yeah. That wraps up another episode, buddy. It certainly does. Time flies again when you're having fun talking about Kiss. It's amazing. Any last famous words, buddy? Well, it is Super Bowl weekend. Yes. Go past. We are, we are Patriot fans, okay? Yes, we are. And because Super Bowl Sunday is such a big event, mm-hmm. I'll be a gambler, baby. Lay down the bet. We get together, Mama, you'll sweat. Oh, yeah. Somebody's going to be sweating. <laughs> um, and, you know, the other thing Tom's going to say to those guys, I am cool. I am the breeze. Beautiful stuff. That's it. All so, right. Thank you guys for listening, Kiss Army. Zeus, we'll see you next time. Good night, Peace Kiss. Peace out. All Girl right. Scout. <laughs>